H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so I'm going to create a new console application. On okay. Now we will see what is the use of uh, uh, different access modifiers, and then you will try. You will understand like. Uh, okay, so now say for example, first thing we are going to learn anyway public. You already know that, but just I will show you uh, all the different. Uh, so I have a class uh, employee. And then, and then here I have, um, say for example, I have public uh, int emph, and I have public string emp name. Okay. Now, if I if I create an object, say for example, I am creating an object employee employee emp is equal to new employee. Now, if I type emp dot so employee age, I am able to access it because it's a public it's a public variable. So all the public variables inside a class can be accessed using object anywhere. Okay. Now, if I make this as private, or let me make this another class, class department and employee. Okay. So this is I'm doing single inheritance here, and now I have a method public um, public int public void print employee so here what I'm doing console dot write line uh, say for example I'm writing uh, uh, like this EMP H okay now now since uh, even if you see here when I type EMP H I'm seeing the variable here so I'm typing like this EMP H so I'm seeing the variable which is actually the variable belong that is uh, that is of employee inside employee the reason why I'm saying is in derived class you can access the public variables, public methods, and public variables. So I'm seeing it now. Even I'm able to access here in the em rename. So this shows that a public variable you can access outside the class. Even you can access inside the derived classes. Okay. Now that means anywhere you can access. Now let me change it to private. So I changed emp age to private variable. So now you can see here that I'm getting an error saying that uh, emp age is inaccessible due to its protection level. So it says protection level in the sense it is a private access, uh, a private modifier. You cannot access outside the class. Even you cannot access in the derived class. So let's try whether we will get it here or not. Emp dot emp name only I'm getting. I'm not getting here. If I if you see here I'm not getting emp uh, age. Okay, so so that is about private variable. And if you put it, if you put this protected, so let me put this as protected. So let me type here emp dot. So still I'm not seeing in the outside the class. But uh, what happened here when I make this as protected? When I type here emp age, I'm seeing it. So in derived class, I'm able to access the variable which is there in the base class, but I'm not able to access outside the class. So that is protected. So we just saw about public, private, and protected. Now we'll see what is internal. So let's take an example of, uh, say, for example, internal means with within the assembly. So an assembly is nothing but an exe file. So for example, let me create another class. So I'll create another class. Right click on this, add new item. If you have confusion within the assembly, assume that within the same uh, projects, within the same console application. So, so now I'll create a class, and I'll make this class as, say, for example, uh, my class. 
so I have another class now I have a method say for example public uh, public void print employee okay so now if you see here uh, I have method called print employee and here I have uh, EMP details now let's try to let's make this as uh, internal let me create an object of this employee EMP dot so I'm not seeing I'm only seeing employee EMP name so what I will do here is I will make this as uh, I'll make this as internal and see the difference now let's try to see whether we can access that see now I'm able to access it so internal is nothing but within the assembly see if you if you see the namespace you have console application 96 and if you see the namespace here console application 96 so when you compile them both uh, when you rebuild this it will create single assembly say for example let me let me comment it out let me rebuild this so when I rebuild this let me go here I think I have to remove some commenting here yeah so let me delete this and when I rebuild this console application you can see that only one exe will be created open content right click on this open containing folder and you can go to bin debug and you will see that there is an exe file so this is an assembly so if you if you make that variable as internal you can access that variable within the assembly okay so that is about uh, uh, okay to explain about protected internal let me um, let me do one thing let me create a class library right click on this add new item add new project and I'm going to create a class library I just created a class math library and I'm deleting this and I'm going to add a new class right click on this add new class add new item and I'm going to give the class name as my uh, math library okay and I'm going to give the class name so let me click on add okay so I gave this and now I'm writing here say for example I'm writing mm, public void or let me put a simple one public int age now if I if I rebuild this okay now uh, this is an other there's another project so now if, if I make this as private say for example if I make this as private let's make this as private now and let me make this class as public okay let me rebuild this now when I rebuild this it will create a DLL because it's a it's a class library so what I'll do now I will actually add this DLL to this reference so what I can do here right click on this add reference and uh, I'm going to add the DLL what is the DLL uh, what is that math library so so let me do one thing let me click on browse so how will I get the path of this DLL so I need to go to my math library class right click on this open containing folder I need to go to bin debug and here I have so let me copy this path and let me try to add it in the reference so right click on this reference add reference and then click on browse I already have that math library there but I doubt whether that is this one or not so let me add this so let me add this now now I have this variable uh, so what I'll do now I will go to this program.cs and I'll try to access this variable age my math library so here I need to write the namespace what is the namespace using uh, using math library now he'll, I'll create a variable here. My math library m is equal to new 
my math library and m dot so I'm not seeing any variable because I don't have any um, I don't have any of the public or private so if I make this as protected let's see whether if I make this as internal so let me see let me verify by making this as internal so I made this as internal and let me rebuild this so rebuilding will create the new DLL and now uh, and now let let me go back to this program.cs and try to dot put m dot even now I'm not able to access so let me change it to protector internal so let's verify whether I can access or not let me rebuild it and let me go to this program.cs okay so even now I'm not able to see this protected internal so okay uh, okay protected internal is something like combination of protected internal within the assembly and within the derived assembly so with um, so I need to make a small change here just a second and uh, to be very frank I have never used that variable protected internal uh, but we have frequently used internal so just a second I'll, I'll try to resolve this so I, I'll remove this math library and I'll add again so what I did here I made the variable uh, variable as protected in internal and then uh, let me rebuild this and then we added the reference here right click on this add reference and I think this is the same one or let me if you see what is it 90 okay let me trace the path so when you rebuild uh, the EX DLL also changes so let me put it here and then go back to this program and then uh, let's try to go back to this program.cs now I will see not with object let's try to see inside this department just a second Okay, I'll, I'll get back on this. Anyone has any idea on that protected internal? Okay, I'll I'll update you on this. Don't worry. Let me open the course content document again. So uh, we just saw about public, private, protected, and internal, and I'll update you on the protected internal. And we saw static val static class and static methods. Static class uh, uh, is the class which which will have only static methods, uh, which can be accessed using class name dot method name. And the static methods are the methods which will be accessed using. So a static class can have only static methods, but whereas a normal class can have both static methods and normal methods. Okay. And abstract class and sealed class we already saw that. And uh, sealed class cannot cannot be used as uh, base class for other class interfaces we saw like interfaces by default the methods are public and abstract and inheritance we saw uh, different types of inheritance uh, where we have uh, a multi single inheritance where we have one base class and one derivative class multiple inheritance multi level inheritance and uh, so uh, multiple inheritance is not supported for classes in C sharp and we learned that it will be supported by interfaces and we saw method overloading and method overriding so and we also saw properties so have we discussed about uh, delegates okay so this is the uh, and how about properties I'm not seeing the response from all I'm only seeing the response from one student how about others if I don't get response I assume we have discussed okay so okay so we have not discussed on uh, delegates and properties okay so let's let's uh, move this uh, 
and we discussed HTML, we discussed JavaScript and uh, CSS we need to discuss and then SQL Server we are done and ADU.NET let me make a quick note of this I'll come up with the PPT uh, so that we can complete quickly so delegates properties and then CSS we'll, co we'll discuss CSS now and then SQL Server is done ADO.NET we need to discuss on data reader and don't worry we'll cover all the topics difference between connected and disconnected architecture okay yeah these are some of the questions and then uh, ASP.NET controls validation and ASP.NET state management and uh, server side techniques page lifecycle we saw page lifecycle ASP.NET master pages we saw that master pages are used for okay uh, for maintaining consistency across websites and we also learned about user controls and we learned about uh, custom error handling where in the web.config we write uh, error codes and uh, we got a question as well I have that question and Ajax we need to learn XML concepts we saw that and Ajax okay so and then uh, we have uh, ASP.NET web services we learned three-tier architecture project we learned even some of you have sent me the assignment as well and uh, introduction to WCF services we saw that uh, WCF services can support multiple protocols all those things we learned and introduction to dotnet and we see yeah we need to we need to discuss this okay so these are the topics which we need to discuss after that I will be explaining a project and I will be giving one week time for you uh, where if you have any doubts in the project and all so that uh, that project I'll be explaining in the next class so these are the topics which we have I'm planning to complete it in the next class and next to next class so in this week ideally we should complete all the topics and uh, and the last class of this week I'll explain the project for 15 minutes and I'll give you all of you like one week time after which we need to connect uh, if anyone has done with the project so that is a that is idea okay so now uh, we will discuss on uh, any questions here all of you let me put now now let me create a table um, let's say for example um, my company so create database my company so very important please focus here so I'm going to click on execute so now uh, what I'll do now create table department okay so I'm not going to create all foreign key references and all you already know that so now what I'll do here uh, DPT ID uh, integer and then I have DPT name we have uh, say for example varicat 20 now create a table employee we will have here EMP name employee employee ID integer and then okay employee name we department we have and uh, here employee ID and then we have EMP name varcare varcare 30 and then we will have uh, let me give department ID because every employee should belongs to some department so department ID so what I can do here references and I can mention here uh, department of department ID okay so this is how we can add reference so this is called a foreign key reference so this department ID is internally referring department ID of department so so if you want to an insert any record here before that you should have records in department because every employee should be associated to a department okay now let me put here insert into uh, I cannot directly put here employee if I try to put here see here what happens 
if I write here EMP ID, if I write here EMP name, and if I write DPT ID, now values. If I mention like this, say for example, if I'm adding one comma and uh, employee name, say for example uh, Rajesh, and say for example department ID one. Now imagine if I don't have this reference ID, so let me comment it out. Okay and let me execute this table and department so I need to use let me create this database my company so it's already there so if it is there I'll use it so use my company so either you can type here use my company or what you can do is you can select here like this you can go here and you can select my company both are same so even if you type this use my company it'll, it'll bring that here now let me create the table department and notice here that I'm not adding a foreign key reference now I'm creating this employee now now if I write like this insert into employee uh, save without this employee so it'll create now even though I don't have department ID it'll create so if someone sees this say for example select star from employee so if someone sees the data and uh, if they want to know what department he belongs to we got to have value department ID 1 but if you go here and see select star from department we don't have that department so that is the reason why people normally add a foreign key reference when you add a foreign key reference when you try to add a department uh, ID which is not there it will throw you an error so so we should not insert so now we don't have data integrity so we don't have department uh, ID but still we are adding employee for that department so which should not happen so what I'll do here I will actually drop the table employee uh, let me remove the uh, table now what I'll do here I will add these references now let me create the table employee so I'm getting an error there are no primary keys referred in the department okay this should be a primary key here okay so, so let me drop the table department okay now so let me create the table department and let me create the table employee now try to insert this value into the employee now I'm getting an error previously it was inserted uh, department ID 1 also inserted but now it is not inserting because I have a foreign key reference here so that is a use uh, that is the reason why we use foreign key references so we'll ensure that only if department ID is there we are going to add the department ID here so so before adding into employee what we need to do now we need to insert a record into the department table with department ID 1 so we need to write here insert into insert into uh, department values or you can give here uh, DEPT ID and then DEPT name say for example uh, I'll give two departments let's, let's take department ID 1 IT department and let me copy this and add one more department department ID 2 here and I'll give here admin okay so now let me execute this now let me execute this so now Rajesh belongs to IT department now let me give another uh, let me copy this uh, let me put it here employee ID 2 who belongs to who is Shankar and belongs to uh, he also belongs to IT department so let me execute this and let me add one more employee for admin so employee ID 3 who is uh, Bharat and who belongs to admin department okay so now I'm done so now what I need to do is I need to assign these values to my drop-down list so what I'll do here let me go back to this uh, let me create a new website so Visual Studio 2013 and file new project and I'm going to select ASP.NET MT web application so Visual Studio 2012 ASP.NET MT web application click on OK this is important because uh, you will not see a project without uh, drop-down list 
okay so so now right click on this add new item <coughs> add new item I am going to take uh, say for example ASP.NET web form and I'm going to give the name as um, one um, say for example employee.aspx okay so let me click on add or say for example employee details.aspx now it is getting added just a second So now I, I, I got the uh, employee details. So what I'll do here, first thing, um, department ID. Select department. And then I have uh, I have here ASP colon uh, drop down list or a list box. And ID is equal to DDL department. And then we need to put run at server. Okay. Now what do we have after that? We need to select employee. ASP colon drop down list ID is equal to DDL <coughs> DDL employee and then we need to put here run at server. Okay. Now so we have drop down list. So what basically we need is uh, based on select selection of so on page load we need to populate this. Okay. Uh, first one department and when I select department I need to populate this so what I'll do here I'll add a class library uh, let's let's say it's a database layer or something uh, new item or yeah so let me do one thing I'll add a new item and I'll name this class file as a DB class so I'll name this as my DB class so what I'll do here I'll take a class uh, We'll take a class file and I'll name this as normally you can have separate project or you can have the same project so my DB class so I added this my DB class so here what I'll do here I'll have a method so public uh, I'll have a connection string as well so public uh, what I'll do here let me put the connection string here where do we add connection string? Uh, I can actually hard code there, but let's try to put it here. Uh, app settings, and then add key is equal to connection string, and then you can put value is equal to um, what is the connection string we give normally? So data source, data source. And then, what else we give? Initial catalog. What is initial catalog? So, do we have any space between data and source? Um, I think so. And here we need to give the database name. The database name is uh, my company. So, let me go to the code and give that uh, my company. And integrated security equal to true okay so anyone wants to answer why do we need to write uh, connection string here instead of uh, this we can write it here itself right uh, here itself we can write right why I am writing in web.config anyone wants to answer why do we need to write it in web.config from web.config you don't need to hard code it in all the files so that is the reason why we put it in web.config so now so let me do one thing so public and uh, I need say for example I uh, have as we have learned from last class like if we don't want to give the database so we will use database and this library that we have just for last class so we use it in this config we write it down in web.config and give the settings uh, I'm not able to hear properly can you repeat yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yeah, me? yeah. What I'm trying to say is like, if we don't want to give the database, um, um, database information to 
any other client side. So we write it down in the web the blog config, the yeah. connection strength yeah. and value. Yeah, that is also one more reason. So imagine, uh, imagine in future. Let's take one example. Imagine in future you changed your data, uh, you changed your s server. So you moved all your database files to another server. So imagine if you hard coded in the code, you need to change in all the places. But now if you put it in web.config, all the code will be referring to that web.config file. Okay. Now, so public, uh, let me give here string connection uh, is equal to, uh, why I'm not getting here configuration manager? I'm using system.configuration. Yeah, you're right. So we need to use here using system dot configuration. 